I've read this book so you don't have to, so that I can explain exactly why pests and disease are actually attacking your plants. If you want to get a copy, it's actually for free. Um, it is Healthy Crop by Francis Shibusu. It is a very fascinating read, it's quite heavy to be honest, uh, lots of scientific literature. If you don't know who I am, I'm Till Simmons, I run this channel as well as Agrisol, which is a regenerative ag consulting business. I help farmers in New South Wales, Australia regenerate their farms. So if that sounds like you and the stuff that we talk about today sounds like it would help you on your farm, then um, sign up for a free consulting call, 30 minutes. Um, anyways, it's for free, let's get into it. So, why are disease and pests actually attacking your plants? And this is something that Jabusu thought about uh, in his research, specifically when he went over to Brazil. And what he developed was a theory of trebosis, which is effectively all the relationships between a parasite and a plant are nutritional in nature. So the interaction going on there is simply because the parasite is feeding off the plant, um, which is quite obvious, but in order to fix this problem, it's the solution is also nutritional. And so when we think of the disease triangle, something that we learn in pretty early grades of agriculture, there's three things required for a disease to, to take. The first is a pathogen, so we need a suitable pathogen. Next is a suitable environment or favorable environment for that pathogen to grow in. And lastly, we need a suitable host or a host that is susceptible to the pathogen. If we have all of those things, then a disease will take place in our plant. But if we don't have the right environment, we won't get the disease. If we don't have the host, if we don't have the pathogen, we won't have the disease. And if we don't have a suitable host, now it's important to say suitable because this is what we get into today. If we don't have a suitable host, then the disease won't take as well. So really, we're talking about developing a host that is unsuitable to the pathogen. And the reason why a parasite, and a parasite is anything that gets a, a positive uh, benefit from our plants at the plant's detriment, so pestle disease, attack our plants is because they can feed off uh, the plant. Now, I think one of the best ways to think about this concept is to think about how we can't eat grass or pasture, but cows can. And the reason why is that our digestive system can't handle breaking down the cellulose in the grass, but cows can, right? So their, their digestion um, is able to break down the cellulose because they have a rumen. And for that reason, they can actually eat grass. And so the grass might be, you know, fantastic and healthy, but we still can't eat it. And so in a similar sense, it's a very similar thing going on with uh, pests and disease. And what they actually need to eat is different to ours. So when we look at you know, a vegetable that's, you know, looking really healthy and we go, that's great food for us, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be great food for insects and disease. So what is the thing that these pests and disease are actually trying to eat? Well, it's uh, either free nitrogen, which is uh, nitrogen or amino acids in the xylem phloem of the plant. So it's not bound to anything. It's, it's flowing easily or it, it's, it's flowing in our plant. So it's either free nitrogen, which includes our amino acids or reducing sugars, which are quite simple sugars. They include um, glucose or fructose as, as well as some other ones, but they're the main ones in plants. And so because of the simple digestion system of our pests, they can actually consume our plant, looking for these free nitrogens and reducing sugars. Now it's important that our plant has reducing sugars and nitrogen, otherwise it's gonna become deficient in those and it can't grow and develop. But what Francis explores in, in his literature is that if we, if we maximize the conversion process of these free nitrogens and, and reducing sugars into their final product, which is protein for nitrogen. So nitrogen needs to be converted, or say if you have nitrate, that needs to first be converted into amino acids and then into proteins. If we have a really good protein synthesis process in our plant, there's a good chance that that plant will become an unsuitable host for our disease and pests. Likewise, when converting nitrogen into proteins, we want to make sure our carbohydrates or our, our simple sugars get converted into complex structures like cellulose, starch, lipids, and proteins. So when this is occurring, when this is happening really efficiently, there should be very little nitrogen and reducing sugars 
in our plant cell, making the plant really unfavorable for our insects to eat because they simply won't get any nutrition from it. To make sure that our nitrogen is converted into proteins, we're gonna make sure our protein th synthesis is um, working efficiently. And for that is a nutritional solution. So we can apply these different nutrients to ensure that that process is happening efficiently. So for protein th synthesis, we're gonna need magnesium. Magnesium is used in the rhizome, which is the, it's, a, it's an enzyme within the cell, um, within the cell that is in charge of taking amino acids and then putting them onto basically uh, the DNA or the mRNA, which is basically the template. So that's in charge of actually building our amino chains that then get turned into proteins. Now, S or sulfur is used in a few of our uh, amino acids. So without sulfur, we're not going to have all the amino acids that we need to build complete proteins. And incomplete proteins are still susceptible to um, pest and disease attack. Molybdenum is important for um, nitrate conversion. Um, so if we don't have molybdenum, we can have a heap of free nitrates in our plant that aren't getting converted into amino acids and not getting converted into proteins. So we can actually have everything, but if we don't have molybdenum and we're applying all this nitrate, then we're gonna have a build up of nitrate in our plants and it's going to make them very susceptible to um, pests and disease. Finally, boron. Boron is not quite used in uh, the protein synthesis itself, but it's used in moving all our nutrients around the plant. So it's very important that we have boron to translocate um, our nitrates and um, ammoniums from our roots throughout the rest of the plant. So we're not getting built up and it can move to affect to where it needs those nutrients. And boron is actually also important in um, converting our reducing sugars to, to the rest of the plant. So Boron is basically like a thing of a truck. It's going to be transporting everything. We don't want it to build up in one particular spot. Otherwise, that's also going to be bad um, for our plant. Now, with this, we also really want to make sure that our photosynthesis process is happening efficiently so that we have a big engine behind our plant that's going to be supplying the plant with a lot of food and energy. And then it can be pumped into cellulose, starch, lipids, and proteins. If we don't have enough carbon in our plants that the, that the plant's fixing from photosynthesis or the energy, it's not going to be able to produce the proteins, which means if, we're, if we have a buildup of nitrogen and we don't have enough carbon, it's not going to be able to make proteins. So we're going to make sure our photosynthesis is happening rapidly and it's an efficient process. So what do we need for that? We need magnesium. Magnesium is very important in the chlorophyll. It's basically at the center of the molecule and it captures that light that comes in. Uh, nitrogen is also used in a very similar sense it's surrounding the magnesium. That's also very important for uh, protein th synthesis. Manganese is used in uh, water hydrolysis, so it actually splits water in um, photosynthesis. That's very important. It's also very important for our water use efficiency in our plants. Iron is used in the assembly of uh, chlorophyll. There's also some other compounds in our plant that assist capturing the light. So when we have a good amount of iron, we actually increase the range of light that we can capture. Finally, phosphorus. Phosphorus is not quite used in photosynthesis, but it is used in an ATP, which is the, think of it as like a battery. It, it stores the energy from respiration. So when plants use up that fuel to drive metabolic processes, it does that by storing that energy in ATP to then send that ATP to other enzymes to use. So this is important, otherwise we're gonna have a build up of energy and we can't, we can't quite process the energy that our plant's making. So that's very important to have phosphorus so that we can have the energy transported to different functions within our plants to then pr uh, process or produce these compounds. So it's quite technical and what we do with the consulting is that we look at these levels in our plants and go, okay, well, you know, you're getting attacked by all these different pests and disease. What's missing in our plants that prevents our plants from converting all these nitrogens and carbon into complete proteins? Um, we take a subtest and go, oh, okay, you're actually magnesium deficient. Magnesium is important for these. Let's apply a follow thing of magnesium and effectively solve our pest and disease problems with nutrition. So that's one level that we explore in the book, the nutritional um, solution. There's also another thing that inhibits this process. So we can build it up or we can in inhibit it.
So one of the best ways to prevent both photosynthesis and protein synthesis is the application of herbicides and pesticides. And so what happens is when we apply these effectively plant toxins, it prevents the plant from carrying out this function and we're gonna get a buildup of nitrogen and uh, reducing sugars in our plant sap, which makes them susceptible to pests and disease. The exact same thing that we are trying to prevent. Now, the thing that pesticides specifically solve, and, it, and don't get me wrong, they are important, is getting rid of the pathogen. So when we look at this disease triangle, we have pesticides getting rid of our pathogen. We have what we discuss here, nutrition, which gets rid of acceptable host because it's not susceptible anymore. Uh, and then we can also have um, cultural management changes that actually gets rid of the environment. Now, relating all these things together is what we call an integrated pest management program that we also consult on. Um, and it looks at this whole system holistically. So we want to be looking at the whole triangle together, talking about you know how can we change the environment, how can we boost our plant health, how can we get rid of the pathogen. So the whole thing's holistically, and we're not just relying on one thing. But this is a big component of making sure our plants don't even get sick in the first place. Now, sometimes you do need to use a pesticide. And so the best solution to that is making sure that when we do apply a pesticide, our plants can recover from this process really, really rapidly. So the best way to do that is by applying carbon source with our herbicide and pesticides. So applying something like a folic acid or a humic substance can provide our plant enough additional to effectively deal with those compounds. And there are situations where you can actually solve the problem very rapidly by applying our nutrition, especially with a foliar spray. So instead of applying a uh, fungicide to get rid of the plant, we can apply some of these to then get rid of the uh, fungus anyways. Good, well, I hope you found that interesting. I'm very passionate about this topic. I find it really interesting. If you have had an experience like this on your farm where you've applied nutrition uh, and you've seen a um, reduction in pests and disease in your farm or like even within a 24 hour period, I wanna know, so put it down in the comments. Uh, that'd be really interesting. Otherwise, again, if you're a New South Wales farmer interested in applying this to your farm, um, go to our website and you can sign up for a free 30 minute uh, consulting call with me. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe and share this with your friend because I think this is really powerful so that we can reduce our pesticide use. Awesome, thanks for watching.